Hello, everyone, and welcome to United Lutheran Church of Proctor. Today is May 31st, day of Pentecost. We are here um, together as much as we can be. We welcome Pastor Denise Shear, who's joining us today. Um, Pastor Judy is our interim, but she is out with surgery, and we wish her very well. Um, we are following the liturgy today from blogs.elca.org slash worship. Uh, we thank them for this resource, and we will begin with the prayer of the day. Let us pray for that. Oh, let me share the screen. Sorry. In this way, you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending unto us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right in all things and rejoice all times in your people. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading for today is from Acts 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are all those, these who are speaking, Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Pagria and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jewish born and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, and they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. You Judeans and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your youth shall see visions, and your elders shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 104. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all, and the earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, with its swarms too many to number, living things both small and great. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. All of them look to you, 
to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O Lord, rejoice in all your works. And look at the earth and it trembles. You look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. 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 The second reading is from 1 Corinthians 12. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are various varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them and everyone. To each is given them manifestation of the spirit for the common good. To one is given through the spirit, the utterance of wisdom, and to another, the utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Uh, uh, Auntie Claudia, you're on mute. Sorry. Gospel, the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Judeans, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you O Christ. Christ. <clears throat> Having read these readings, think of this. There are certainly spirits abroad in the world, and even in our own lives, that do not work for the common good. There are certainly people, and perhaps we have been among them, who think that only their own language and culture can speak the truth and that people unlike them cannot have visions of hope that matter. They are just drunk. But this attitude does not mark the spirit of God, the spirit given us when we are drawn into the word of God and into faithful prayer. God's spirit comes from and bears witness to the risen Christ. It enables forgiveness. God's forgiveness of us, our forgiveness of each other, and our ministry of forgiveness to all the world. 
that spirit gives us all differing abilities to use for building each other up. It gives vision and wisdom for all. In our baptism into Christ, God's spirit has formed us into one body, and that body is quite alive even in our present distance from each other. Now we, in turn, even in this time, are to bear witness to our neighbors and greet the world with peace. Pastor Denise, this is your time. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you, friends. Happy birthday, church. This is Pentecost Sunday. And it's a festival Sunday. And usually in our sanctuaries, we mark it with geraniums and red streamers and red banners and pyramids, trying to help us visualize the, the spirit in our midst, the coming of the spirit. So today we need to use our imagination. It's the day we celebrate the coming of God's spirit on the disciples in Jerusalem, where Jesus had instructed them to go and wait for the filling of the spirit. And they were obedient to that. And so they went back to Jerusalem, to that same upper room, and they waited. And then coming on them in a spectacular display of power, God's spirit comes in the form of a violent rushing wind and flames of fire, tongues of fire glowing on their heads. And this enabled Peter to stand and to communicate God's love with this whole international crowd that happened to be in the city that day for a festival of their own. And they came running to see what all of the commotion was about. And the crowd was astonished, causing them to ask, what does this mean? And so Peter and the others, speaking in every language of the known world at that time, through the power of this Holy Spirit, speaks in ways that they can hear and understand, speaks to their hearts. And as a result, scripture tells us astonishingly, <laughs> thousand of them were baptized in that one single day and then and then just imagine they all left Jerusalem going back to their towns and their villages sharing what they had seen and heard with their family members and friends bringing the gospel to all the world we see a map of the world there behind Chris and her mother. It's a, it's a lovely visual this day, this world that God so loves. And on that day, they shared the love of God beyond all borders. There was no distinction, no border. It was for all. Now, some of us might be very well acquainted with this story, but I think it still astonishes us, does it not? And maybe even confuses us, leading us to ask, what does this mean for us? Right? More specifically, what does this first Pentecost 
and the coming of the Holy Spirit mean for us today, right now? This Pentecost Sunday, year 2020. Not just 2,000 years ago, but right now. What does the Spirit speak to us and say? It tells us, and it means that through the Holy Spirit, Jesus is with us. Oh, not physically, but spiritually present with us and everywhere everyone at all times we have not been abandoned we have not been forgotten jesus promises to come to be with us and is here this is good news god has not left us here to fend for ourselves it is evidence of God's love for us, that God abides with us in this way, loving us, all of God's children. It also means that we're not directionless. God's spirit comes empowering us for a purpose the purpose to be sent out to the world living in the manner of jesus's life and teachings and his death and his resurrection the spirit of god blows us out into the world for the sake of the world witnessing to that love of god that we experience we do it through our words and through our actions for the purpose of bringing light and hope and help and love and peace and justice. And we might be thinking, but right now, <laughs> our reality is our churches for the most part are shattered. And we might feel like we're just marking time until we can go back to the church, to the building, I'm sorry, to be the church again. That we have to wait till we go back to be the church of Jesus Christ. That we're just hanging on, just surviving. But the truth is, God's Spirit is always at work, always at work, especially in these challenging times that we find ourselves in. The Spirit of God is nudging us forward to find new and creative we ways to be God's people to the world. Look at us this morning. We are the church. We are, we might not see all see each other on the screen, but we are here and, and we hear one another's voices. We are alive. It's funny, if someone could take pre-church chatter, it would, it would probably go viral. <laughs> and our screens tip and we can't quite get on and, and we, we feel anxious about it and, and we, we laugh. But this is the church on earth right now, either live like we are or being streamed on Facebook. We gather for worship now 
on the internet through Zoom, however, what YouTube. When I went to seminary, uh, trust me, I, I never would have conceived of this way of being church, and we never trained for this, <laughs> nor, nor did any of us expect to learn how to do this at this time and in this manner. But the spirit blows through us, being creative, finding new ways. Some churches are even through the internet reaching out to whole new communities that they might not have reached before. So in some communities, the church of Jesus Christ is even growing at this time of sheltering and quarantine. And as we gather for church, we hear the word. We meditate on it. We let it shape us. We share prayers and concerns and we weep with those who weep and we rejoice in times of celebration. We sing, we praise, we give thanks. And we also make quilts. We make masks. We call one another. We organize and deliver food. We give blood. We volunteer at food banks. We have our ear to the ground, trying to assess what the need in the community might be and how we best meet that, whatever it might be. We couldn't have conceived even two months ago, three months ago maybe, of being the church in this way. But here we are. We are a God's church. We have not been abandoned. We have not been forgotten. We are not being ignored by God. But the Spirit is here falling fresh on us, giving us the ability to dream new dreams, new vision of being the church at this time. And the Spirit gives us the power to live those dreams, those new visions out. So church, we have a present. We are the present. And we have a future. And I, I could not tell you with any degree of certainty. In fact, my mind can't even go there of what we might look like even three months down the road. It's hard to imagine. But the spirit is here, creating ways in our minds and heart to connect and relate to this world God loves so very, very deeply. And we know it's also a very troubled world right now. There are hungry children and hungry elderly people. There's staggering unemployment. There's sickness, disease, and death. We all are impacted in some way, shape, or form, at least by this pandemic. And we see around us right now, especially racial injustice. And I believe I would be remiss right now as a, as a pastor of the Church of Jesus Christ if we did not reflect on this for a moment beginning in this moment. I encourage us to weep with the families of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Armand Arbery, to, to weep with their families and the families of the countless other sons and daughters who have been lost to senseless violence. Yes, it is true that property 
is being destroyed. And it comes from rage that has not unfortunately been addressed. I don't know anyone who contones that violence. We live up north here and we might be inclined to consign this problem to down there, right? To the Twin Cities or Chicago or New York or LA. And certainly it's more comfortable for us to think this way. But as people of faith, we dare not let ourselves off the hook on this. Because the problem starts in the hearts and minds of all of us, all of us who are part of a majority culture. We often, even not realizing, make harmful assumptions about others. And we can enjoy the benefits that are ascribed to us without necessarily thinking about how differently marginalized people might be experiencing life, like education and health and this virus and law enforcement. Truthfully, it's not a problem just down there. It's not. I don't know if you get the Duluth Tribune, if you read it online or get the paper, but an Asian American woman who has lived in our area for 40 years, recently wrote a letter to the editor sharing how she has now been having to fear for her life. That strangers on the street threaten her and tell her to go back home. She is not wanted here. And Tuesday, St. Louis County Commissioners scuttled a resolution to welcome refugees who might want to settle here. And they made that decision to scuttle it after about 60 plus some callers calling in on Zoom at the commission meeting, commenting charged comments, spreading misinformation and conspiracy. So it's a common problem that we all share and we cannot ignore it, we cannot deny it, we cannot sidestep it. It is here. Pentecost reminds us that we all share the same creator who loves us all equally and loves this world. Granted, right now we might all be feeling overwhelmed by the pandemic and everything associated with that. And what we see on our television screens and read online about protests. And it's easy to feel overwhelmed. The pain is hard to process. And we're traveling down a road that we have not been down before. But we be assured that the spirit is here, blowing fresh air and energy to bring us and our world hope and life-giving change. The good news of Pentecost. And what does this mean? What does it all mean? Is that God works for the good in all things. In all things. No matter how uncomfortable 
or difficult or challenging they might feel at the moment. God's spirit, God's energy prevails. The good news of Pentecost is that God is spiritually present with us in all things. In all things. Especially with us in these troubled times. The good news of Pentecost is that the Spirit continues to blow, to fall fresh on us, reminding us that God loves us unconditionally. That we have not been forgotten, we've not been abandoned, we're not being ignored. We're not just stalled or marking time or hanging on. The good news of Pentecost is God's spirit is always falling fresh, filling us with new possibilities and new visions for what community looks like. Not just for us, but for all of us, everyone. It's no longer us and them, but it's we. We're all in this together. And the Spirit is here to help us think, to help us act, to truly be part of shaping a more just and peaceful and hopeful earth after God's own heart. This is good news. <laughs> there is hope. And we are part of that hope. Sheltered in place, quarantined. We're still part of that hope. Thanks be to God that this is so. And let our prayer in these difficult times for ourselves and communally be Holy Spirit, come fall fresh on us. So happy birthday, church. <laughs> happy third birthday, United. And it has been the spirit of God who brought you together and is with you now and always. Amen. Thank you. 
Let's pray together these prayers for our church and world. On this day of Pentecost, we unite in prayer, asking God to send the Holy Spirit on the church, the world, and all who are in need. After each petition, after we pray as mentioned, please respond with, Come Holy Spirit. We pray for the church around the globe, for the Eastern Orthodox churches, we pray, come Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, for the Roman Catholic Church. We pray, come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit, for Protestant and Anglican churches. We pray, 
come, come Holy Spirit. Spirit. For Pentecostal churches, we pray, come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. For evangelicals and independents, we pray, come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. For our own congregation, we pray, come, come Holy, Spirit. Holy Spirit. For everyone who searches for you, we pray, come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Restore with your breath the whole creation, especially the lands and waters laden with pollution and the animals whose habitats are threatened. For your earth, we pray, come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Send your spirit on the leaders of nations, on legislatures and on judges, that the people of the world will benefit from your justice and your peace. For the nations of the world, we pray, come, Holy Spirit. Visit all who are suffering, all who feel hopeless, and all who face death. Send healing on those we name here before you on our prayer list. Servicemen and women serving our country, Dennis Anderson, Alice Summer, Pastor Judy Anderson Bauer, Gladys Haugen, hospital workers, first responders, police, firefighters, and all those working on the front line providing services and access to necessities, and others we name before you now. Veronica, Amanda, Chad, Leanne, Kenny, we pray, come Holy Spirit. Spirit. Restore to health those who have contracted the virus. Uphold health care workers, grant jobs to those who are unemployed, and assist researchers in discovering a vaccine. For all who are confronting the coronavirus, we pray, come, oh, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Bless those who are graduating from schools and universities. Give our youth hope for their future. For our graduates, we pray, come, come Holy Spirit. Spirit. Show our nation and our churches how to connect with those whose language we cannot speak. For the speakers of every language, under the sun, we pray, come, come Holy Spirit. Spirit. As Elizabeth welcomed Mary to her home, give us ways during this time to share with one another the faithfulness we receive from you. Surprise us with unexpected grace. For family members and friends, we pray, Come, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Hear also the cries of our own hearts. For ourselves, we pray, Come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Receive our praise for all for the centuries who have gone before us in the faith. From the first Pentecost throughout Christian history and up to this week. That at the end, we and all the saints will rejoice in your presence. We pray, come, come Holy Spirit. Spirit. With full confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us 
language to proclaim your gospel through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of the trial. And, and deliver us from evil. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom the, power, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Now and forever. Amen. 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 The God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The God of all grace bless us now and forever. Amen. 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 Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen indeed. Alleluia. Send forth your spirit, O God. And, and renew the face of the earth. Before we end, I'd like to announce a couple of things. First of all, uh, Pastor Denise did mention United's third birthday celebration. Um, we are going to celebrate this on Thursday, June 4th, from 4 to 6 p.m. And we're going to celebrate social distance style. So you're welcome to come and drive through United's parking lot. Um, you probably haven't seen the church for a while, so come on over. And you'll receive a small party favor to commemorate our third year of being together. Um, strict COVID rules will be followed. We'll ask you not to get out of your car. Those of us handing out the party favors will be masked and gloved, and all party favors will be sanitized. So it will be completely safe. We, I also wanna just point out the Zoom address you connected with today will stay the same going forward. Um, the meeting ID is 218-624-4255, which is the church's phone number. And this is also the password. Um, it will always be this address and meeting ID and password going forward. So thank you all for coming today and have a wonderful week. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Happy Sunday. Bless you all.